Okay, a six and a face card. Now, in this scenario, let's read it. It says, a card, a single card, is randomly selected from a standard deck of 52. Find the probability of drawing a given one card. What's the probability that your card will be a six and a face card? No, no chance. Zero. Not going to happen. So the probability of this is zero. It's impossible because sixes are sixes. They're completely different. Other questions? 31 on 10.5 Yeah. 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 So the probability of a spade and a club and a spade. And a spade and a club and then a spade. That's going to be the probability. Since we're replacing it, they're all independent. So we just take the probability of each of those things happening on a single card draw and, uh, and multiply them together. Spade times the probability of a club times the probability of a spade. What's the probability of pulling a spade? 13 spades, 52 cards. Probability of a club. 13 out of 52. Keep in mind, we've put the spade back. So there's still 52 cards to choose from. And the probability of then picking a spade again. 13 out of 52. And it's even possible if I pulled the six of spades here, I could possibly get the six of spades again. I put it back. I put it back the club that I picked. So. Are all independent. It's, it'd be the same as if we had three separate decks and we just pick a card out of each of the decks. It's all independent. One thing doesn't affect the other. That's one fourth times one fourth times one fourth. It's one out of 64. Yeah. Now the probability of spade and club and spade again without replacement, meaning we don't put the cards back. The first thing we do, is, it's a fresh deck, there's nothing fancy about it, it's the probability of a spade. But then we're going to take a club, but we haven't put the spade back. So we're going to get the probability that we take a club, get in that, we already took a spade. Then we have this third thing where we have removed two cards from the deck. We know what they're both supposed to be, it's supposed to be a spade and a club next. So we get the probability of a spade, given that the first two things we did were get a seven, or it's not a seven, a spade and a club. What we call conditional probabilities. One, one, prob or one thing happening here affects the probability of the second, a third, or fourth thing happening. What's the probability of getting a spade? 13, 13, 13 spades, 52 cards. But then what's the probability of getting a club if I have taken a spade out? 13 out of 51. 13 out of 51, because there are still 13 clubs, but only 51 cards uh, in total, because one of them is gone. Now, what's the probability of getting a spade, given that we already got a spade and a club? 12 out of 13. 12 spades. This one's a spade, so this one is one less spade possible. And there's 50 cards total, because we've taken two out of the total. One fourth. Um, that's not going to simplify, so it's 13 out of 51. Um, although, here, let's back this up. Let's just cross cancel. So this is 1 and 4, uh, 12 and 51, both divisible by 3. I think that was 17, it comes out to be. Uh, 150. That's 2. That's 
26 out of Questions? always have the probability of A or B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. And in this scenario, that's like the probability that you pull a card that is a king and a spade. Like it has two things that are true about it uh, at the same time, what we would call attributes. So uh, that one thing has two attributes, but the probability of that happening in this case is zero. There is no overlap here. There's no way that you're going to say, pull a card that is one thing and another thing. Okay. Apparently, uh, whatever A is, whatever scenario that's describing, whatever B is, completely disjoint, not overlapping, couldn't happen at the same time. Okay. So this is zero. This looks like zero. When this is true, when the probability of A and B is true, we call it disjoint. So that's the answer to one part of the question. Is it disjoint or overlapping? It's disjoint. This is the definition of disjoint. The probability of A and B is zero. So we know the probability of A or B is 0.65. The probability of A is unknown. So it's just the probability of A plus the probability of B. Known, I didn't write it down. Is 0.38. So now we're going to get the probability of A by itself. Subtract 0.38, which is an algebra problem. And this will be 0 0.27. from the deck of 52, it's the probability that the card will be a 6 or black. So the probability is 6 or black. As always, we're going to take the probability that it could be a 6. Right? We get to win that often. We get to be successful in our experiment that often. Um, also, we get to win if it comes up black. If it's a black card, then we also win. So we get, like, we're adding it together. We're getting more probabilities, more likely that we, you win, let's just call it win. But we may have put on too much if there are cards that are six and also black. We might consider that. So what's the probability we get a six? Four out of 52. Probability we get a black? Six out of 52. All right. So it seems like we will win, we'll be successful if uh, you know, 26 uh, out of 52 times, like half of the time, plus uh, four, four times out of 52, right? except for that two of these belong 
here. Right? They both have two of the same cards. So we need to take away two cards that are the same. Right? The probability that the card that we pick is both six and black. Take that away. Uh, so we get to 28 out of 52, or seven out of 13. following numbered and colored balls, and uh, I got rid of the question, I guess. Disappeared it. Gotta have a question. So the probability of what? Probability that a ball you pick will be even numbered or black. So even or black. What's the probability? Plus the probability black minus the probability of even and black. Okay. Just by looking up here, what's the probability that you draw an even numbered ball? Five out of ten. Okay. One, two, three, four, five of them. There's ten all together, so five out of ten. Plus the probability that it's black. Three out of ten. Probability that it's even and black. Two, the four and the six are even. They're also black. So you're gonna take away that two. Uh, we get six out of ten, or three out of five. Also, when you can just see it, you can just count all of the balls that match that description that are this or that. Uh, this is even. Okay, that's that's even. It's also black. Uh, here, here's black, it's not even, but it's black. This is both, this is black and it's even. Uh, here's even, and here's even. So we just went through and we counted all the ones that are winners, and we haven't over counted. We haven't counted, why would you, if you're going through here, count the four two times or the six two times, right? You naturally would not do that. So by doing that, that's, you know, you're mentally subtracting the, the two over counts. Probability to flip a heads? One out of two. One out of two. Okay, so if we just flip one heads, the probability is a half. If we want to flip two heads in a row, well, we got probability of a heads, probability of a heads, one half. What do we do with those probabilities? Multiply. Multiply them together. One quarter of the time, we'll flip two in a row, right? Let's draw a picture of that. Half of the time, we'll get a heads. All right, so then we'll go on and try to get another heads. Well, out of that half of the time, half of that time, we'll get another heads, right? If we go a third time, half of that time, we will get a heads for a third time. And half of that time, we'll get heads again. So we're just getting half of a half of a half of a half, right? How many times are we going to do this? Ten. Ten, ten times. Uh, right, just ten. Okay, if I don't want to type half into my calculator a bunch of times, what's a fast way to do this? Multiply the two ten times, and then one over the... We'll have, like, if we take all these one half times each other, we do the one times itself ten times, and then it's just a one. Two times itself ten times. It's a fast way to do two times itself ten times. Mm -hmm. 
2 to the 10th, 1 over multiply 2 times itself 10 times. Or same thing, 1 half to the 10th. This is just saying, like, I know what that's going to be. That's going to be 1. But down here, I need to figure out what the denominator is going to be. That's 2 times itself 10 times. OK, this idea would be really useful today as we learn this new subject. So it's a uh, one over one thousand twenty-four. Oh, no. I think we all knew that. You don't know what two to the tenth is, right? No. If you play twenty forty-eight, you should know that, right? I got over the weekend. I got forty ninety-six. Yeah, Caleb. Yeah, Caleb. Got forty-six thousand. I expect a little more applause, but that's all right. Okay, so we're going to draw cards, two cards. Without replacing them, probability that we'll draw six and a base card. So probability, six and a base card. And so here's the, the thing. It might be the last time I take you know, a significant amount of time to, to state this. If you go back to the homework questions that we did, We'll take a second to go all the way back to. Uh -huh. Way, way back here. Wait, this one. So here we had the probability of six and a face card. That came out to be zero. Right? Huh? Yeah, it's a different kind of and. What does the and mean that we're working with in our current question? Then. It means what? Then. Yeah, it means then because. In this case, there's one thing that happens and a second thing happens. This really means then. I don't know why, in all the years of, of math, we haven't thought, or, or the first people who did this, why did they think using and in two different contexts was a good idea? I don't know. But it happens everywhere, all the time. It really should say then. If one thing happens and then another thing happens, it would, be more, it would make more sense to say six then, a face card. OK, so what's the probability of getting a six? Four out of 52 is the probability. Do not put that card back. So the probability of getting a face card next? There are, oh sorry, not, not 13, yeah, 12. There are still 12, 12 face cards, because I didn't take any face cards out by taking a six out. Right. Out of 51, though, because I did take out a card out of the total. This is 13. Twelve out of thirteen times fifty-one. Uh, thirteen times fifty-one is off the top of my head. Oh. Six sixty-three. Oh, right. Twelve and fifty-one are divisible by three. Four. So it's twelve. Six sixty-three. Well, it should be two twenty-one. Four out of two twenty-one. Yeah. Well, these would be divisible by three each, right? Because yeah. back here we had factors of three that we didn't eliminate. So they got carried over. OK. Any questions about uh, disjoint, overlapping, dependent, independent, and then? 2048, 2096, 46,000. Once you get the one that's past 4096. Today, we are talking about experiments. Uh, actually, like a bunch of the same experiment all in a row. A bunch of the same experiment all in a row. The kind of experiment is a binomial experiment. So let's break all that down. We're going to do an experiment. Binomial means by, right? Binomial experiment means uh, two things can happen. Or one thing can happen, or it can not happen. That's how it works. We do the same thing over and over and over, looking for a particular outcome. If it doesn't happen, we disregard it and say we failed to we failed to succeed, we failed to get what we wanted. Okay. So
So to make this a little easier, I think this worked well. So uh, I'm going to ask you a question to find the probability that, um, let's say, we um, we roll a die. Right. So that's an experiment. Rolling a die is an experiment. We have to define success, so we're going to want to get a, uh, a five. So we want to get a five. Right. So what's the probability that we'll succeed? One out of six is the probability we'll succeed. So let's, and that's all we want to do. We don't care what anything else is, only that we get a five. Right. So what's the probability that when we roll this die ten times in a row, so we're doing the same thing ten times in a row, what's the probability that we will get all fives? All of them come up fives. Okay, kind of like that ten heads in a row. How it could be ten heads in a row. Very similar. So we get ten fives in a row when we roll uh, a die. Okay. So how would we calculate that? The number five only has to do with what we want to see, right? It doesn't really, that doesn't factor into. How many times do we want to get it? One, six. Ten one, six. times in a row. What's that? One, six. Six. One, six. It'd be the tenth, right? Because we want to do it ten times in a row? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so uh, if we were to so we're replacing. represent this with some dashes, well, right? The first thing that happens is we get a five, right? Like we'll, uh, we'll uh, succeed here. That represents succeeding. Right. What's the probability of success? One, one, one out of six. What's the probability of success next time? One out of six. six. One out of 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 six. Last time. All <laughs> together, we've done this ten times. Multiply them, right? When one thing happens after another, we multiply the probabilities together. The probability that we get these things all in a row gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. If you multiply by a fraction that's less than one, which most probabilities are, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. It's less and less likely that we will multiply these things, or that we will do these things all in a row. Right. So that's one sixth to the tenth. Easy enough, right? If all of them come up fives, it's very unlikely. One of the most unlikely things that can happen in, in dice. If you roll one die, uh, a bunch of times in a row that you get the same number uh, time after time after time after time. What's the probability that we don't get any fives? That every time we roll it, we don't get a five. Ten times in a row. Five sixths? Race. Race to the tenth. Okay. So let's do the probability. Okay. So let's, let's talk about probability of what? Well, it's not the probability of five. And it's not the probability of. What is it the probability of? How would we describe it? What, how would you describe what happened here? I asked you, you figured it out. What was the question? Wouldn't it be 1-6 raised to the 10? Do you know what happened? No, the probability, like what goes in the parentheses is a description of what happened. What happens in the real world? What what is the event that takes place? This tiny, tiny probability, one six to the ten, is the probability that what happens? So five, you get a five, so five ten, ten times in a row. You get a five, ten times in a row. Okay. Um, we're gonna say that's ten, right? You get ten of them. Ten successes. Once we define what the experiment is, rolling a die, and what success is, getting a five, we get ten successes. That's, that's how we're going to talk about it. Once you know what the experiment is, and you know what success is, then we can just say how many successes we want. So now we're going to talk about the probability of zero successes. I have a question. Yeah. So could you leave your answer, like when you do the whole one six times one six, blah, 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 blah? Could you leave your answer at 1-6 raised to the 10? Uh, yeah, we want to go ahead. Fine. Just like when you're drinking. Say what? 
helps like when you type in like when I type it in my calculator it's like point zero 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 zero
supposed to know to go over like eight or go over ten? Like how am I supposed to know that with my calculator? Your calculator? Yeah. Well, look at the number that it gives you. What is it? It's point zero. It's like point one six one five zero five five eight three. Point one. one. It's point one six one five zero five five eight three. And this can't be right. That's what mine is too. Yeah, that's what I got. This can't be right. That's what I got. If you do, okay, now, so this is, this is going to be a problem. If you do 5, 6 to the 10th like this. Okay, when uh, you do parentheses, then yeah. you get the decimal like that, but when you don't, you get 8.2. So I have an actual fraction. So, on my so you have got to put it in parentheses, because if you don't, it won't know. Because the reason it works here is, in the numerator, when you multiply a bunch of 1, 6 together, the numerator is going to be 1. So that's okay. And when we divide it by 6 to the 10th, that works just fine. But when we take 5 divided by 6 to the 10th without parentheses, it's just 6 to the 10th in the denominator, and in the numerator, it's 5. That's not. Okay. Mine, I think parentheses are equivalent to 0.16. Yeah, when you use yeah. parentheses, you get 0.16. The parentheses would be correct. The one I had up here that was times 10 to the negative oh. 8 was wrong. So this So 0.16. 0.16. So a lot more likely that that will happen. But then again, in 10 rolls, doesn't it seem unlikely that we wouldn't get like maybe one five? Right? Because the probability of getting a six, or sorry, five, is one in six. So you would think like every six rolls or so, you get a five turn up somewhere in there. Right? So somehow we've got to account for that. So let's look at that. Let's look at the probability of one success. Probability of one success. Take a crack at it. See if you can figure out how likely it is to get one success. I forgot to mention that. Uh, Kind of one goal of uh, today is uh, for n trials of a binomial experiment. Okay, so in this case, n in our uh, specific example refers to the 10 that we're doing. We're doing 10 trials of rolling a die. The experiment is rolling a die. The binomial part refers to the fact that we're only looking to get a five, and anything else is considered failure. Okay? Success, failure, win, lose, binary, binomial. Um, the probability, of course, we're looking for probability here, of k successes. Right? So we've looked at the probability of, of all 10 being successes, of zero being successes. Right now we're investigating one success, right? So that would be k. So one goal here is to understand, not just to use this formula, but to understand this formula. N, C, K, probability of getting a five, or, or getting whatever you want, of succeeding, to the K times one minus P to the N minus K power. And I'm confident that right now, as we talk about this uh, probability of one success, that part of it is going to make a lot of sense. Literally 1 minus p to the k. n minus k. The, the exponent is, is n minus k, like in parentheses. Almost. So if you did this, you said, well, I'm going to succeed here, and then I'll fail the rest of the time. So if you put 1 sixth here, and then 5 sixths, and 5 sixths, 5 sixths, all the way down the line. The last thing is a failure, five sixths. Uh, and if you went so far as to even write this, one sixth times five sixths to the ninth power, 
then you've done great. Done great. You're wrong, but you've done great. Oh, that's what okay? I said. You're, you're partly right, let's say. You're not wrong. You're partly right. But this is not the probability. What does this come out to be? 0 0.032. Point zero three two. Exactly. Okay. Everybody get that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Point zero three two. Three point two percent. Let's think about this though. Let's let's think for a moment. What was the probability that we get no successes? Point sixteen. So like a sixteen percent chance. This year is just three point two. It's quite a bit smaller. Didn't we say that it would seem more likely that we'd get one five in there somewhere in ten rolls? Right? Shouldn't you get a, a, a five in there like one out of six times, theoretically? Yeah? Theoretically, if it worked perfectly and it wasn't quite random, we would get like one, two, three, four, oh, five, and then get a six, and then one, two, three, uh, what, four, and you know, another six, another five didn't come up, right? But it would seem like it would be it would be more likely that we get like one five than no fives. But it seems you know we've, right now we're at three point two percent. That doesn't seem to fit what we just said. Here's the reason why. This is a very specific scenario, a very specific scenario where only the first roll was a five, then the second through the tenth rolls were all not fives. Is that the only way that we can get one five? How else could we get a five? In the middle, right? The middle roll, the second roll, the tenth roll, the ninth roll, the eighth roll. Right? So here we go. There's first roll is five, six. That's a failure. Second roll is our success. And then we fail all the way down the line, all the rest of the uh, ten times. What's the probability that this happens? That our second roll is our success? You multiply all those together. What do you think that would come out to be? Same thing. Same thing. There's a one one sixth. And there's nine five sixths. Right. So it's going to be exactly the same whether it's the first one or the second one or the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, or tenth one. All of those have the same probability. Right. This is point three two. What if it comes in third? Well, that's also point three two. What if it comes in fourth? That's also point three two. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. 0 0.032. Thank you for correcting me. So once we like wrote all these 0 0.032s down, what would we do with all of them? We would add them, right? Because they're, they're these disjoint things. We couldn't have a, a uh, our first roll be a 5 and our second roll be a 5 and also only have one success. right? So. Either this happens, or this happens, or this happens, or this happens, or this happens. Wouldn't we allow for multiple possibilities for us to, to like be winners? Remember, we add those probabilities together. Okay? So we'd add all those probabilities together. Well, how many times does this happen? How many ways can you get just one five out of ten? Two. Ten ways, right? In the first position, we could get our success. Oh, yeah. The second, all the way through the tenth, only ten ways. Get all the way down to the bottom. The last probability would be 0 0.032. There would be. Uh, let's do it better than that. There would be 10 of these. So the shortcut, instead of adding it 10 times, we could just multiply by 10, right? There's 10 of them. So we have 1 sixth times 5 sixths to the ninth power. Okay, if you look back at that formula, it should look kind of familiar. A couple of probabilities multiplied by each other. And probability of succeeding to the k power, to the first power in our case, 1 sixth to the first power. And then 1 minus p, well that's 1 minus 1 sixth, that's 5 sixths. Okay. To the n minus k, well that's the rest of the times we fail. There's 9 of those in our case. Okay, so what's this part? That's how many ways we can succeed or, or that, that, that our event could happen, that we could have one success, right? How many ways can we have one success? We just talked about it. Ten, right? We can have a five on the first, second, third, whatever, all the way through to the tenth roll. So we multiply this by ten. Counting to ten, that's, that's easy and it's a very simple example. Figuring out that there's ten ways to succeed 
once out of 10 times. That's clear, we just move that, that success, the success all the way down the line, there's 10 places for it to be. Actually, we're starting to, starting to see it. Next, though, we start to see why we need that formula, why there needs to be that combination as part of the formula. What's the probability of two successes? specifically in the, the one previous example. The first thing we do, the first roll we get, could be our five, right? The probability of that happening is one six. The second roll we get could be our five. The probability of that happening is one six. Well, now we have two fives, and that's all we want to get. The rest would have to be not uh, five. So this would be five sixths, five sixths, and so on and so on. Last thing, uh, five sixths. Okay, so specifically the first two rolls being fives, the probability of that happening would be one six times itself two times, times five six times itself eight times, right? But as with the previous example, that's not the only way that can happen, right? We said we don't have to get a five on the first roll, we can get it on the second roll, the third roll, fourth roll, fifth roll, and that's really easy to count, right? We just move it on down the line 10 places, 10 times, 10 ways. But here it's not as easy as that. It's not just 10 times, that's just 10 ways, right? Um, we could count this by hand. We could put the two right here, and then we could maybe move that second five here so that our third roll is a five. And then the rest of them are, are failures. But that's still going to be 1 sixth times itself twice, times 5 sixths times itself eight times. And then we could move that second roll into the fourth position. And on and on that goes. We can move it. Then we can have, we can have no, we can have a five, then not a five, then not a five. And then here comes our five again, our second five. And then the rest will be not fives, right? And that's the probability of not getting a five on any of those rolls. So you can move down that second one and uh, move it down until it's all the way gets, you know, all the way to the end uh, with with five sixths and five sixths all the way through until so the last one is one sixth, and then we move that first one here, right? We get uh, five sixths, one sixth, one sixth, and then five sixths all the way down to. Do you see what I'm doing? So I'm just saying, here are the different ways that we could get uh, two fives. We're just moving these probabilities around, kind of filling in the spaces, all the possible ways. Um, and then we can take this as our second five, and we move it down. And then we put the we start back and put the two of them here, and then we move that second one all the way down. We can count them that way, but that's going to take forever. Forty-five. It is forty-five. Just saying. And then think about if we let there be three of them, you know, three successes. That could come to be even worse. Okay, but here, here's the end of the story. The end of the story. Every one of these, every one of these has the same probability, That's what right? I did. I did take one. Hey, We're talking about chill out. Every one of these has the same probability. Five six to the eighth, one six squared, five six to the eighth. On and on and on it goes. Every one of these has the same probability. All I have to do is figure out how many times that happened, and the answer is 45. There are 45 ways for this to happen. There's definitely an easier way to figure that out. Okay. You gotta think about what we're doing here. This is the combinations part. This is the NCK part. How many ways out of 10 rolls can we have two of them be successes? Nine? No. Eight. No, eight. It's the same kind of question as this. You have 10 people, 
and you want to choose two of them to be like on a team, right? We don't care what order they're in. Combinations, right? How many ways can you, from 10 people, out of 10 people, how many ways can you choose two of them to be on a team together? Oh, 45. Oh, okay. But I was asking a different question. Okay. So just like you would choose two people out of 10 to be on a team, we're choosing 10 roles, or two roles out of 10 roles to be the successes. Right. What would we use to count that many ways? Two out of ten things where we don't care about the order. Combinations. Combinations, right? Ten, C, two. How many ways are there to have two of these things be successes? There are ten, C, two ways for that to happen. Forty-five ways. So you take forty-five, multiply it by one-sixth squared times five-sixths to the eighth. Remember, this is 10C2. That's that part of that formula that I put up there toward the beginning of class. So without counting them all, how would you find it? You would just do that. That. Right? If you remember the formula, that's going to be 10 factorial over 2 factorial times 8 factorial. This 8 factorial will cancel all of the factors in 10 factorial from 8 on down. So this will wind up being just 10 times 9, and now the 8 on down got canceled by the 8 factorial. That's over 2 factorial, that's 2 times 1. You can see this is 90. 90 divided by 2 is 45. There's our 45. Let's look at the probability of three. Okay. So let me just remind you what this formula is doing. The probability is part of the p to the k, n times 1 minus p to the n minus k. That's this part, where we consider, say, three of these, three successes, say the first three are our successes. Well, the probability of each of those being a success is 1, 6, 1, 6, 1, 6. The probability of the rest of them being failure would be 5, 6 times itself a bunch of times, right? That means we have five, 1, 6 times itself. How many times? Three times. And then a 5, 6 times itself how many times? Seven. Seven, right? Just the rest of the time, whatever 3 plus that number is to get to 10. Or 10 minus 3, that's your n minus k n is 10, k is 3. k is the number of successes. 3 successes, 10 minus 3 gives us that power of 7. So that, I'm just going to write this out here real quick, n c k times p to the k times 1 minus p to the n minus k. Uh, that, is this part? that's just the probability of any particular, uh, you know, very specific three of these roles being successes. But we see this probability occur many, many, many times because, because any of these 10 roles can be our three successes. The first three could be successes. The last three could be successes. The middle three could be successes. The second, third, and fourth one could be successes. The first one, the fifth one and the eighth one could be our successes. See what I'm saying? All different ways for this to happen. Right? We can count really systematically somewhere along the line. We get this to be failure, this to be a failure, this to be a success, failure, 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 success, failure, success. That's that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the last one a failure. The probability that that happens is the same as the probability that the first three are successes and the rest failures. And still, one sixth to the third times five sixths to the seventh. This is three successes and seven failures, and those probabilities are going to be represented that many times. And all the way through that, in a really systematic way, we have five sixths, five sixths, all the way down to the last three being our successes. And that again has the same probability.
So all you have to do is figure out how many times does this probability come up? How many ways are there to have three out of 10 successes? 120. What's that? 120. 120, how did you find it? 10 to C3, right? It's the same question, how many ways are there to take three people out of 10 to make a committee? How many ways are there to choose three out of 10 pairs of pants to take three on vacation? How many ways are there to choose three out of 10, uh, how many ways are there to get a three card hand out of 10 cards? I don't know if I have 10 cards, but we're choosing out of 10 cards, we're gonna put three of them at a time to make three card hand, how many ways are there for that to happen? It's the same question. So we count it the same way, 10 C3. So all together, how many times does that come up? It comes up 10 C3 times, or I heard 120. <coughs> so then what we get is 120, that comes from here, times, what's uh, 1 6 to the third time, to the times 5 6 to the seventh? Yeah. Get a decimal for that. Zero, zero, four, six. I like the four decimal places. So this is pretty unlikely, like this particular scenario, to get a uh, not five, a not five, a five, not five, not five, not five, a five, not a five, a five, and a not five. Like that's unlikely. It's fairly unlikely. There is a 0.46% chance that that will happen. But that's not the only way that we can get three out of 10 successes. We could get, there's 120 different ways that we could get three successes out of 10. Zero, 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 one, three. Oh, no. How is there more? You got several six. people saying that? Yeah. Make sure when you do that, you got your parentheses around your one six, parentheses around your five six. Zero, 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 four, six is just the Oh, just the one six to the third, that was all that was? Yeah. So when you take that and multiply by that, you get 0 0.001. Okay, so that it's even less likely that this, any particular uh, scenario will occur. But when we, when we say, well, this is just describing one way that we could get three out of 10 successes, when we count all of them, there's 120 of them, so we get to add this probability up 120 times, or just do 120 times 0 0.0013, which comes out to be what? 0.1. 156. What was the, what did the probability come out to be back here for one success? We needed 45 times 1 6 to the second times 5 6 to the 8. For two successes? For two successes? Yes. What did that come out to be? 0.29. 0.29? Point 0.29. Point if you disagree, let me know. You could have some consensus on this. Back here. What about the probability of one success? What did that come out to be? That was uh, this guy 10 times 1 6 times 5 6 to the 9. Point three two. Um, what about the zero successes? How likely was that? Yeah, yeah, because that one was easy. We just multiply five six by itself ten times. We got point one six. We got point one six. We got point three two. That's one success. We got uh, point two nine. That's two successes. And we have 0.156. What has been most likely so far? One success, kind of like what we predicted, right? There are six rolls. Seems like you should get one. Getting two is kind of pushing it. If there were 12, or if there were, uh, yeah, if there were 12 rolls, then you might expect two rolls to be more likely. But it's not quite to 12, so it's, you know, it's close. It's gonna be one or two rolls are gonna be most likely. Having no sixes come up, it's not as likely as, it, as one of them. Uh, having all sixes come up, is, or fives, sorry, fives, it's really unlikely, right? That we get this really unlikely thing to happen 10 times in a row is, is very, very unlikely. Um, so as we start to look at all of the probabilities, we're talking about a probability distribution. So zero successes, one success, two successes, three successes. We've looked at all these so far. We could do four successes, five successes, six, seven, eight, nine, and we actually did this one too. We did all ten successes. So we can create, a, create what we call a histogram. That's a bar, bar graph where the bars touch each other. Okay. 
How likely is it that we will get no successes? How likely was that? 0.16? I think that's what it was. Okay, here's 0.16. So let's say that this is like 0.2. How likely was it that we would get one success? Say what? 0.32. There's 0.2. This would be 0.4. 0.32 is like right there. Okay, more likely. Like almost uh, twice as likely. Okay, how about two successes? Less likely. 0.29 is a little bit below 0.3. How about three successes? 0.16? One five six. Mm -hmm. Point one five six. Okay, so they're almost the same as zero. Because in, in any given specific scenario, it's less likely, but it can happen more ways, right? More ways than just the zero successes. And then we could do four, right? Really quickly, because now we know all the pieces that go into this. We have ten. Choose four ways that we can have four successes out of ten goals. The probability that we'll succeed is one sixth. And that is going to show up four times. So we're going to have four factors in one sixth. The rest of the time we're going to fail. Okay, so that's going to be five six to the sixth power. Let's show that in our calculator. We know how likely it is that we'll have four out of the ten rolls be fives. And it's probably going to, like, as we continue out to more and more successes, it's going to be less and less likely. Right? Because the probability of a success is so unlikely. One sixth, it's not very likely. Anybody come up with that? 0 0.054. 0 0.054. somewhere in there. And as we allow there to be more and more successes, it becomes less and less and less likely. So if you can identify the number of trials, how many times are you doing this thing? 10 times in a row? times in a row, 32 times in a row. How many times you want to succeed? How many times you want to succeed? You want to get three rolls out of 10, you want to get five rolls, you want you know, 14 successes out of 32 trials. This would be successes as well. If you know the probability of a, of a success, how likely is the soccer player to uh, make this goal. Excuse the interruption. Uh, um, this would be the probability of the su success, so it might be, like I said, some soccer player kicking a goal, or kicking a penalty shot, or making a pass, or it could be a basketball player taking a free throw shot. It could be, uh, you know, sports are a good place for stats to happen. Uh, how likely is it that a, somebody who doesn't wear their seatbelt to live through a terrible crash? Or, like, it could be the probability of, of anything, of any one thing happening, and then look at it over you know, lots of trials. Um, this is the probability of success, a single success. Okay, this would be the, well, probability that you don't succeed the rest of the time, right? One minus that, 100% minus the probability of succeeding. This would be the probability of failure. And this would be the number of failures. If you can break down any description into those, those pieces, you just throw it in there. The tricky part would be, what if I just gave you a question? Are you supposed to be counting things? Are you supposed to be finding probabilities? Like, should I just multiply probabilities together? Should I be using this, this formula? If you're going to use this formula, it's going to be because you're doing the same thing over and over and over and over, looking for one particular outcome. If that's happening, you're probably using this formula. Now, one more thing, just a question. What if I want to know the probability of getting at least one five? At least one five. Well, how many fives am I allowed to get? One. What? You get. You get uh, six. Six? No, you get mm -hmm. nine. Nine? Ten? Nine. How about four? Yeah. Five? Yeah. Three? Seven? Yeah. Eight. Yeah. Anything that's one or more. I win, right? Yeah. At least one. Okay, so here's the probability of exactly one, exactly two, exactly three. So if I take all of these and add them, and add them up, yeah? if I add up every probability, 
on, on a uh, probability distribution, I should get 100%, right? Because I found everything that could possibly happen. Zero successes all the way to all 10 successes. So if I want to know about at least one, I would have to add all these up. Or, yeah, subtract the probability that it never happens from one. That'd be a lot less work. At least the All right, you've done it amazing. Thank you very much for today. That's it. Oh.